My dear brothers and sisters, a warm welcome to each and every one of you to this session on the family. And today we shall discuss the issues of in-laws in marriage. Sometimes being married to someone also means you're marrying each other's family. So not only you would have to adjust yourself with your new spouse, but you also need to build a good relationship with his parents at least. But what if you find yourself clashed, the both of you, with your in-laws? Don't give up yet, because today I'm going to help you identify the in-law problems that you might be having and also share a few tips on handling it in a very positive and healthy way. This is based on our counseling that we do at Snehalaya. And today, I would like to share with you nine common in-law problems and how do we handle it. The first one, where you feel that my in-laws are too controlling. Do you feel like your mother-in-law is the one in charge of your marriage instead of you and your spouse? Does she constantly tell you what to do and what not to do, where to live, how to raise your kids, and does she get upset if you do not comply with her instructions? If so, then you might be facing the classic controlling in-law case. It's one thing if you and your spouse are on the same page about how to handle the overbearing figure, but if he's actually following his mother's every command and feeling guilty, if you don't, then you need to solve it quickly before it puts more pressure and stress in your marital relationship. To deal with the struggling power play within the family, Take time, my dear friends, to find the roots of the problem. Is your in-law such a control freak because she's afraid of losing the dominance of her now married son's life? Why does your husband feel so powerless against his mother? Is it a hard-to-break habit that stemmed from some childhood experience? When you have figured out the reasons behind these behaviors, discuss this with your husband and help him understand that the two of you together should lead the marriage. Create a united front with your spouse and forget about having her approval on every little thing. So hopefully, your in-laws can see who's in control of the marriage. Problem number two. My in-law is rude or unfriendly. Surely you would love to see your in-laws as an extra set of loving parents in your life. But it will be hard if they aren't as welcoming as you thought they would be. For some reason, you might feel that they are cold, unfriendly, and even rude to you. You might also hear them saying hurtful things, like comparing you to your husband's ex-girlfriend, or bad-mouthing you in front of other family members. So what do you do in such an unpleasant situation? First of all, dear brothers and sisters, let your husband know that his parents' behavior is hurting your feelings and making you uncomfortable. Let him be the one to ask his parents to be nicer or to be more proactive in standing up for you. You can also stand up for yourself and ask them the reason behind their hostile treatment. But remember to hold your tongue and anger so that you wouldn't lose your temper and say things that you might regret. 
Just don't fight fire with fire. Simply tell them that you're not okay with all the negativity that they've been projecting this whole time and ask them to respect your new status as your son's wife. Firm, but nicely. Trying to find a common ground also can work because you can get more familiar with each other and finally see some things eye to eye. If the problem persists, limit yourself from their environment and have a personal space so that you wouldn't have to interact with them on a daily basis. Yes, you should respect them anyway, but you shouldn't force yourself to be best friends with your in-laws if you're just not connecting well with them. Problem number three, my in-law is still treating my spouse like a child. For some parents, their kids will forever be their baby, no matter how grown up they are now. It can be cute to see his mom still cook his favorite meal every time the two of you are visiting, but it would surely get annoying if they are worrying and babying him too much. For example, if your in-laws are over fussing about the cold that he's having, implying that you are not taking better care of him like they did, or unnecessarily sending food over to your house, or not trusting him with making major decisions with you, then that's a problem. My dear friends, as long as it's harmless and not affecting your relationship or marriage, keep your cool and accept the fact that loving parents will always shower their kids with affection in their own unique ways. But if those endearing gestures have turned into an annoyance for you, it is better to draw the line immediately. Though it might seem harsh, it's essential for you to let them know the limit. Tell them that you appreciate all of their help and advice, but you and your spouse together are trying to find your own ways to navigate this marriage. And the two of you can grow and be an independent self-sufficient couple. Problem number four. My in-laws are too involved in my married life. The moment you're having an occasional argument with your spouse, just like any normal couple would do, but your in-laws are too nosy and butting in, or if they expect you to consult them first whenever you're trying to make a career or housing decision, that's when you know that you have a meddling parent-in-law. To have a solid support system is nice. To consult them is nice. But not if they turned out to be intruding and interfering in your personal issues that was none of their concern. So what, you, what should you do? You might ask, well, you and your husband should try to keep any personal issue out of your in-laws' knowledge. If you don't want them to meddle in it. Don't fight or flaunt your problems in front of them. Also, don't snitch or complain about your spouse's annoying habits in front of them. Contain and try to solve it by yourself. When you feel like you're giving, when you feel like they're giving you an unsolicited advice, you can always say thank you, but no thanks. Or simply nod and tell them that you'll consider it to keep your peace. At the end of the day, every big decision 
should be made by you together with your spouse. Problem number five. My in-laws judge and criticize my every move. We all know that every parent wants nothing but the best for their child, including in terms of finding a, a, a life companion. But we are only human, and it's natural to make mistakes when you're trying to adapt to a newly ventured married life. Imagine how stressful it would be to have someone watching your every move and then judge or criticize it, especially when they feel like you don't meet their expectations. This is also one of the classic cases of toxic in-laws, wherein you feel like you can't do anything right. If you're working, then you're not prioritizing the family. But if you stay at home, then they would say that you've become too lazy. They would rush you to have a baby and reprimand you and your husband's decision to postpone a pregnancy. Or don't even start with the parenting stage because they feel like you have no experience and they have more experience than you. It feels like you don't have any say about how to raise your own kids. Even though you might be tempted to explode into rage and tell them off, I'm suggesting that you take a more diplomatic route in order to achieve long-term peace. Don't take it too personal if you feel that they are attacking you or make your spouse your ally. That way, when you make your spouse your ally, you can help build a defense by saying that every decision in your marriage are being made together. So it would be unfair for them to blame only you. You can also say something like, thank you for the input, but I, but I think this works better for me, or I appreciate your opinion, and I prefer to do it this way. You don't need to have other people's approval on everything you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing positively and hopefully, and they can finally see your best intentions. Problem number six. My in-law is clingy and overly attached to my spouse. In contrast to the problem number three that I had mentioned, wherein you feel my in-law is treating my spouse like a child, where your parent-in-law treats you or your husband as an infant, but in this case, they are the ones who are acting like children. It's like they are afraid of losing the attention of their son, so they become clingy, needy, and attached to them even to the point of competing for his love with you. If they are constantly calling him for help to handle small and trivial things, following the two of you around despite the fact that you're going maybe on a romantic trip, or telling him stuff like how he doesn't love his parents anymore since he was married, then you're facing this particular in-law problem. Handle this problem delicately, my dear friends, because they are his parents and they deserve to be loved and respected. If they are afraid of being left behind or probably feeling lonely at their own home, you should always ensure them that, that you will be there for them, a support system. Don't dismiss, don't hate them for it. Rather, be open and include them in your family activities like birthdays, holidays, anniversaries, etc. And by doing this, they would be reassured that they won't lose their son, but instead gain a loving daughter as well. Problem number seven. My in-laws have no respect 
for my privacy. Are you having difficulties with your in-laws who love to come to your house unannounced or snoop on your private conversation or even nonchalantly taking a peek into confidential emails and letters or messages? Even if you're sharing a living space with them, it doesn't mean that they can walk in and out of your territory without considering your privacy. Being close-knit and transparent is one thing, but obviously you don't need to share every personal or intimate detail in your marriage to your in-laws or other people you don't feel comfortable with. The moment you realize, my dear friends, that your in-laws are being insensitive to this particular need, you and your spouse have to work together to build some sort of boundaries and strategy to break off this habit. First, don't overshare your problems with them. They don't need to know everything that you are arguing about. Second, create a safe space for you and your husband to be alone, undisturbed. It could be asking your in-laws to call before coming to your house or simply a lock on the door or drawers to keep your private stuff out of their reach. Lastly, respect their privacy in return. Set an example by not butting in when they are having an argument with each other. But rather, express your hesitation to look at their phones or private documents even when they are asking you to do it. Problem number eight, my in-laws are too dramatic and too sensitive. We have seen the dramatic in-law on TV soap operas, but who knew that they actually exist in real life? Be prepared, my dear friends, if your in-law has the tendencies to, for being melodramatic, making exaggerated stories and constantly being offended by every little thing that you do or say. You might just land a role in this new episode of family drama. But when faced with the problematic in-laws who has the knack of acting emotionally and turning you into an antagonist, you better pick your battles. If you react with the same hysterical note as they did, you will be dealing with this kind of problem for the rest of your marriage because you're actually giving them the reaction that they expected. But if you rather choose to respond honestly, there's no need to be rude, but convey your feelings in a clear and neutral way. It could also be pointless to make some everyone see how wrong your in-laws are, even if it's obvious, because sometimes it's not just about being right, but also about being happy. And you have to make the choice. Do you want to be right or do you want to be happy in your marriage? So for your sake, take the high ground. Try to compromise as much as you can and don't let their negativity poison you or your marriage. And lastly, problem number nine, my in-laws try to turn me and my spouse against each other. This is the worst kind of toxic in-laws because instead of being supportive of your marriage, they are trying to make you and your spouse turn against each other. As much as I hoped that none of you is facing this problem, I have to break the news that for whatever reason, some in-laws actually plot and manipulate their way into their kids' marriage. Some might ask their kids to pick a side between their parents or their spouse, very sad, which is totally unfair. 
Some might also badmouth their kid's spouse in front of others, in front of relations, in front of friends, and always try to be the good guys. One advice for couples who are having this problem is, don't take the bait. I hope you know your spouse well enough so you're going, not going to fall into these domestic traps. Recognize the pattern. Listen to your instinct and avoid trusting their words instantly. For example, if your in-law is trying to upset you by telling how wonderful your spouse's former lover is compared to you, brush it off and don't take it personally. You should let your spouse know, my dear friends, about his parents' behavior. But remember, you need to pick your own battles. He may not always be in the mood to hear all your complaints about his awful parents. So it's essential for you to have a solid support group outside the house. Try to turn to your best friends, your siblings, or even counseling to get things out of your chest. Work out your way so that this problem won't cause a strain in your marriage and relationship. At the end of the day, just as you accept your husband for all his flaws and qualities, you should also admit that his parents are probably not going to change. The important thing is you have tried to make things better. Find solutions, mend the relationship, and improve yourself. If all else fails, look at the fact that this is the way things are and move on. Because what is most important is your relationship with your spouse more than any other thing. Thank you very much and God bless you. Celebrate God with your hands Celebrate God with your voice Celebrate God in all that you do Listen to Him with your eyes Listen to Him with your heart Listen to Him as He speaks with you And He will be with you In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters, we have just heard a teaching on our relationship with in-laws and we pray for all our family members, we pray for our spouses, we pray for our parents, we pray for our in-laws, our children, our siblings and all those who are related to us in some way or the other. Let us now reflect on a reading from the Gospel of Luke chapter 6 verses 27 and 28 Jesus says but to you who hear I say love your enemies do good to those who hate you bless those who curse you pray for those who mistreat you love your enemies do good to those who hate you Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. And our Lord invites us this evening to reflect on our relationship with others, especially those whom we do not get along with. To our enemies, he tells us to love them. To those who hate us, he tells us to do good to them. 
to those who curse us, we are asked to bless them. And to those who mistreat us, to pray for them. In other words, what Jesus invites us to do is not to pay evil with evil, but rather to do good. Because love is more powerful than evil. Love is a stronger force than any kind of evil. Let us at this moment first experience the love of God in our own lives. As we breathe in, let us relax and see the Lord in front of us, the loving face of Jesus. Let us offer to the Lord our emptiness, our hurt, all the inner wounds that we have been carrying for the past so many days, months and even years. And let us surrender it to Jesus right now. It is only He who can bless us and fill us with His love and whatever is lacking in our lives. Let us tell the Lord, Lord Jesus, I believe in your love for me. Lord, I believe that you are loving me. I am filled with your divine love. I am filled with your divine light. I am a child of God. I am loved. I am filled with Jesus' peace. I am a peaceful being. I am blessed. God is in complete control of my life. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And even as we say these powerful affirmations, knowing that we are claiming God's word, which is powerful, let us absorb the love of God in our minds and in our hearts. Let us believe that the Lord is filling us right now as we continue to say, I am loved. I am a child of God. God's grace is sufficient for me.
and let us at this moment bring to mind all those who have hurt us especially our family members the ones that we have taken for granted the ones that have taken us for granted maybe your heart may be filled with remorse and revenge and anger towards them each time you think about them but today we are going to bless them and love them with the love that Jesus has put into our hearts bring them to your mind all those who hurt you all those you allowed to hurt you and make a prayer for them right now and say lord i bless this person with the love that you have poured into my heart freely and willingly lord i bless this person no matter what he or she has said or done lord i believe in your power i believe that in everything you are working for my good lord i bless this person and i ask you to pour out your love into the life the mind and the heart of this person bless them lord love them take care of all their needs bless them lord love them take care of all their needs bless them lord love them take care of all their needs lord i pray for every person that has come into my life the ones who have brought me joy the ones who have caused harm and pain i ask you lord that you pour out your healing love on every person that i have encountered let me also say like you said on the cross father forgive them they do not know what they do father forgive them they do not know what they do thank you lord for all the blessings that you have given me Thank you Lord for pouring out your love and your mercy into my life. Help me Lord to be a blessing to others. Knowing that when I have you I have enough and I am enough. For without you I can do nothing. help me lord to be more loving to always do good and to bless everyone who comes into my life mother mary intercede for me 
Fill me with God's grace to always do His will. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greater love and friendship has no Sweet.